Recording is on. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. My name is Farida Lakani, and I am a NASA Elspace NPWEE Academy alumni. What is NASA Elspace? There are two academies, Mission Concept and NASA Proposal Writing Eval and Evaluation Experience Academy. L the LNL space stands for Lucy Student Pipeline Accelerator and Competency Enabler. And you were focusing on Lucy program and the Artemis program too. This is based through Arizona State University and they are two 12 week academies. You can only participate in one per semester. Um, there's also a summer academy too, spring, fall, and summer. And you have to be an undergraduate student. However, if you are enrolled in a um, community college for dual credit, you are more than welcome to apply. And um, I highly recommend anyone in an undergraduate program, um, a US college or university applies. It is a great experience. You get to meet with subject matter experts and chief technologists from different NASA centers. Specific, we specifically interacted the most with NASA Goddard and NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. And throughout the academy, you have a dedication of two and a half hours per week, sometimes one and a half. It just depends on the call. You are on Zoom with over 400 people on call and you have an additional four to six hours per week to put in towards your team project once you get assigned your teams within the first or second week. And then at NPWEE, I was the student and budget planner of one of the over 100 teams and 491 participants selected to participate. And our topic was, was focused on designing an energy efficient alternative to rocket fuel, specifically through researching the applications of graphene aerogel on thermal property and its thermal conductive properties and reducing the payload to make uh, to promote fuel efficiency. And we calculated the cost of the mission and I helped to do, well, I calculated the cost of the mission and I helped to do this to mitigate the financial risk. In order to expedite the Artemis program, which was the focus of the Proposal Writing Academy, you had to cut down the cost and figure out a way to speed up launch before 2024. And next. You uh, have the opportunity to collaborate with subject matter experts. Um, we wrote our preliminary design review and they helped us write the report in the technical manner that NASA would approve it. We did a simplified version. Uh, granted, we're all undergraduate students. We were not writing a 40 page proposal. We were writing a seven page proposal and three of the pages were just a cover page and citations. Um, we prepared a Zoom presentation at the end and explained the design concept the Gantt chart and the timeline, our simulation results on AutoCAD and C++. We also use MATLAB and Python to display the results and data, as well as we created graphics in different art, online and digital art forms, such as Procreate or Sketchbook Autodesk, and then in SolidWorks. And we also planned the experiment, anticipated the risk and risk mitigations through budget calculations. At the end, when you're done submitting your project, you serve on a review panel with NASA specialists and proposal evaluators and chief project managers to review and assess other teams' proposals. And you get to see what it's like in the approval process. It is a long but enjoyable experience. And one thing I'd like to say about um, having a proposal like critiqued in front of you is that it makes it worth the experience. Like you are trying to figure out how do you submit your ideas to NASA. It becomes easier to visualize what you want to solve in problems related to aerospace. And you get chief you get the chief technologist's feedback too. Next. 
So the timeline is that for the first week or the weeks before you apply, we'll call that week zero, you are getting familiar with the NASA roadmaps. If you, they send you a link in the emails and there are about 14 of them that are important. There are actually 15, the first one is zero, but um, most people do not choose it. Um, and they are hundreds to thousands of pages long. I recommend that you choose one with the most interesting topic to you and skim through it. It is, uh, it takes about a week to read completely. And once you get assigned to teams within the first and second week, uh, even if you don't have people you don't know in the academy, they'll assign you randomly to people within the same area, school, uh, state, and time zone. And you want to join the Little Space Discord and LinkedIn and start brainstorming ideas to accelerate the Artemis mission and the Lucy program. For the weeks three to five, you're choosing a roadmap. And a roadmap, you're focusing uh, the roadmaps we talked about in week zero through two. We chose the ninth one, which is entry, descent, and landing systems. You are creating a quad chart. A quad chart is broken up into four um, areas. Um, you are focusing on, sorry, I'm having a bit of a lag. You are focusing on the concept you want to focus on. We chose graphene aerogel. You are writing out your team members and their contributions. And you're also doing the metrics of the concept in addition to showing the uh, possible experiment and the data. Sorry, I'm having a bit of lag. My internet's going in and out right now. And next you are creating the Gantt chart and you are also building the timeline. And you have to get that all approved within these five weeks. The next five weeks you are getting into contact with your subject matter experts. I also recommend getting into contact with professors and other professionals you know. And reaching out over Instagram and LinkedIn really do help. Even if they can't contribute to the project, you uh, definitely need at least one subject matter expert um, through any NASA um, NASA center. It doesn't necessarily have to be Marshall, and they don't necessarily have to work at NASA anymore. I think they just have to have worked there at one point or work in another government contracted lab. And then you'll begin drafting the technical report. It's only about seven pages, and um, three of them are like a cover sheet and citations. And weeks eight through 10, you are finishing up that technical report and preparing your new technology report form, which has your quad chart and your Gantt chart. And it's um, it has a bit more graphics, so it makes it easier to read. And then you're also filing your, um, you're also filing the disclosure of invention of a new technology. So pretty much if it gets approved, you have a patent. And then weeks 11 through 12, you were serving on the review panel I discussed earlier for the proposal. And then you are getting that feedback and learning how to critique. You are actually talking to the NASA subject matter experts and uh, they will give you career advice as well as proposal advice. And then six months later, after you're done with the academy, you'll get your official course certificate. But after the academy is done, you're more than welcome to apply for another academy. Like specific, You can apply for NPWE as many times as you want, as long as you're an undergraduate. Or you can apply for mission concept. And I recommend keep applying because the grand prize is $10,000. And like the finalists get prizes too and recognition. And even if you don't win anything, it's just a great experience and great exposure. Like you get to promote yourself as well as learn how to market yourself and your online forums if you have them. Next. And then as someone who's involved in space organizations, the way to get more active instead of being passive is that you need to join an AIAA chapter or SEEDS club or a rocket tree association, or you can start your own. I just recommend having a space to work in. Like you need to have your own uh, workspace. And if you don't, it's gonna be very hard to stay motivated. 
it's like when you do homework at home, you're in your house, your house is like uh, your safe zone, but you need to create a work zone in order to properly focus, which is why you build an office or simulate uh, working conditions. Same concept there. And then I recommend starting a passion project. This isn't just for getting into elite universities. This is like just something you want just to start off with. I would suggest starting off with an enthusiast account rather than a full blown blog if you're not ready for that because it's easier to keep up with. You can make quick graphics and just talk about what's important to those graphics within the post below. Just start a simple Instagram account and keep networking with people, keep talking to analog astronauts and astronauts and astronaut candidates on Instagram and LinkedIn. And that way you can join established forums and create your own forums too, like edu for space um, There are also several virtual conferences going on this year. I know for sure SpaceCon in Houston is now switching to virtual. And last year I had the opportunity to be a part of U of H's um, Interplanetary Congress session they hosted. They work in collaboration with the space architecture program at the school I was at. I was in architecture before I switched over to mechanical engineering. And we got to speak and network with uh, four astronauts and, and one cosmonaut. We uh, had them look at some of our design work uh, for the graduate program. And they should be, they were supposed to return but then the global pandemic hit. But they also did bring a few astronauts in um, for the U of H AIAA chapter for some of our general meetings. And you get to figure out what it's like to be an astronaut, what it's like to go through the application process and what life is like after you return back from space. But definitely on your own, you should, you can, not necessarily should, you can build rockets, you can sign up for space camp if you want to or can afford it, and then apply for those NASA internships through Pathways. You can be a high school student. I think you just only have to be 16 and above, and you have to have letters of recommendation, your official transcript, and just don't lie, don't um, round or uh, don't fabricate anything on your applications. They are very strict about that. Just be yourself and it's okay if you haven't done much work. You're applying to get experience and honestly, applications for internships with Boeing, Lockheed Martin, or any space company is all a numbers game. You just need to keep applying and keep connecting and eventually your work will get you somewhere. Any questions? All right. We got three questions from Bihar beforehand. The sure. first one is, what advice do you have to students applying to L Space Academy? What advice? I guess learn how to um, manage your time. It does take at least six hours a week. And if you have more than 18 hours, I recommend that you work on a team with more than six people so that the work is um, divided enough to where you can make a successful a meaningful contribution. Uh, I also think that since it is your introduction to research and design, especially if you are a freshman or if you haven't done undergraduate research, it is great exposure into instrumentation and what it's like to um, work on a project that you're creating from scratch. I recommend you also get familiar with MATLAB and Python to display your data, as well as AutoCAD and, Quip, uh, and SOLIDWORKS. I also recommend that you start networking with uh, with aerospace professionals, uh, subject matter experts, and you start reading up on Reddit actually about NASA L space. Reddit is probably the most useful forum when looking up all things aerospace. Cool. So our next one is how selective is the NASA L space program? I think. As long as you're enrolled in a university or a college or community college, you will most definitely get in. I think that there are over 400 people that apply. They have 500 spots. Sometimes they're not even all filled up. 
especially because with uh, the pandemic, a lot of people have been really busy with coursework. I think everyone has a fair shot. Everyone I know that applied got in. I've never heard of anyone being rejected unless like they didn't meet the requirements or they were from out of the country. And our last question, what internship or space program do you plan on doing next? Next, well, I'm applying for a NASA internship at NASA Johnson, and I'm also applying through ULA Rocketry. But once again, I am getting most of my information and connections from online, and um, it really helps networking with LinkedIn professionals, as well as some of the professors at college. You really should network with your professors, and they will help you get in. And that's it. Thank you. And if any of you have any further questions or want to network with me, uh, my contact information is there. Can I ask a question? Of course. Um, what kind of things did you do prior to joining the? Oh, I. Uh, what convinced me is that I wanted to switch out from architecture to engineering. I always had a passion for space. And I really wanted to be a NASA intern. Unfortunately, I just wasn't ready for that level of dedication. So I Googled NASA academies and NASA programs for undergraduates. There are several. You have NASA Social, you have NASA Seeds, which Suita did. Uh, you have uh, all of these other academies too. They are actually on NASA's site and you can call them and I would actually type in the programs on LinkedIn so that you can see uh, connections who have done these academies. They are more responsive and they will help guide you in the right direction. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anything else? No, I think we're all good. Thank you. You're welcome.